All right, to keep us on track for the day, just in case you also have additional um, presentations you're joining in, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Welcome to our second day of our virtual education abroad fair this fall. Um, you are at the session for the College of Liberal Arts short term programs. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. I want to begin by reading our CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion. And significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. So for those of you that I have not met in this space before, my name is Nicole Pulowski. I use she, her, her program pronouns. I support students who are interested in studying abroad in Latin America, semester at sea, as well as Spain. I also support a handful of staff and faculty led programs here at CSU. I personally studied abroad in Cape Town, South Africa as a psychology student, and I taught English with the Peace Corps in Mongolia. You may have already attended one of our Education Abroad 101 presentations. If you haven't yet, that is happening tomorrow at 9 a.m. That presentation has a great overview of Education Abroad at CSU, the skills you can gain from Education Abroad, why it is important, and a breakdown of all the different program types. This session today, we're going to focus on specifically short-term programs for liberal arts students. But before I jump in, I would like to do some myth busting, which is a fun part of my job. Um, so I would like to start by dispelling some myths. First things first, an education abroad should not delay your graduation. In fact, with good planning, it will enhance your degree, help you graduate on time, and in some cases may even help you graduate early. Second, there is a myth that education abroad is more expensive than courses here at CSU and living in Fort Collins. There may be some expensive programs, but most programs are similar to CSU tuition and less, some are even less expensive. Third, if you start early and talk to your academic advisor about going abroad, you will be able to fulfill courses you need to keep you on track for graduation. This could be courses required for your major or electives. So we recommend getting started early. Our risk management team sure has been busy over the past year during our global pandemic. We have an international risk manager that constantly monitors and communicates some of the challenges or risks students may face abroad. By working all together, we can foster safe and successful experiences abroad. I wanted to share a quick snapshot of liberal arts students abroad over the years. So we've had RAMs in every major in liberal arts go abroad. So you can see this chart. I thought this was pretty cool to see which majors um, are really highly attended in education abroad. Sociology is pretty high, journalism studies, journalism and media communication, communication studies, art and art history. So you can kind of see where your major is on this chart and get a good idea. There also are some top destinations that I'd like to share where students go abroad. Um, in order, we see liberal arts students going to the UK, Italy, Spain, the Czech Republic, Mexico, and Japan. So nearly every CSU department now has an approved recommended programs abroad list. Our office has created these lists in collaboration with your department. It's just a start and a way to start searching which programs may work for you, but you can be confident if there's a program on one of these lists, it contains courses that can help fulfill your degree requirements. As always, we encourage you to keep in close contact with your academic advisor about your academic needs. So let's jump into some example programs. There's hundreds of programs that can support liberal arts students, but I'm going to highlight five today. 
The first one is in Japan, someplace I've always wanted to go. It's definitely at the top of my bucket list. And this program is called Cultural Studies in Japan, and it's a CSU staff and faculty led program. It runs every summer, and on this program, you get to explore modern and traditional Japan. You'll explore several different sites in the Kansai region, and through hands on cultural activities, educational excursions, and tours of famous Japanese historic sites, you will enhance, deepen, and expand your understanding of the Japanese culture in contemporary Japan. The course is worth three credits, and it, the course itself is called Study Abroad Japan Cultural Studies. The course explores traditional and modern Japanese culture through interactions and learning from local Japanese people. Understanding of Japanese culture and contemporary Japan will be enhanced, deepened, and experienced through firsthand experiences. So for example, students will go on J Japan's public transportation um, to all the different various locations you'll travel to throughout the program. So through this, you will experience the country through a local lens, gaining special insight into Japanese norms and behavior. It is worthwhile noting that Japan's transportation infrastructure is one of the cleanest, most reliable and safest in the world. Now let's hop over to Mexico. So this program is called History, Community and the Environment in Todos Santos, Mexico. This program is also offered every summer and is three credits. This program offers students a rich opportunity to learn about the history of community identity, formation, and change in the town and region of Todo Santos, Baja California Sur. So some of you may know CSU has our own international extension campus in Todo Santos, Mexico. So students and faculty on this program will meet and conduct oral history interviews with a range of community members and organizations from teachers and high school students to cultural leaders, ranchers, conservation scientists, environmental education, ed educators, and women's organizations. So the Todos Santos campus is located in the beautiful Baja California Sur, just an hour north of Cabo San Lucas. So you will have the opportunity to live in the dorms there and enjoy the beautiful quiet town of Todos Santos. It's just miles from the beach and the Pacific Ocean with estuaries and mountains and deserts. It's a beautiful area. This program will be rich with excursions and experiential learning opportunities in Todos Santos, as well as Pescadero, La Paz, the Sierra de la Laguna, and along the beaches and deserts of the area. Now let's hop over to the UK. So this program is three credits and it's offered every spring break in the UK. The spring semester course with spring break in the UK examines key public policy making theories, roles of various policy tools, and the relationship between public policy and key institutional partners in London. You'll get to visit Parliament, the Institute for Government, the Tower of London, and more. So this program is three credits and the course is called Study Abroad London, Comparative UK and US Policy. Now we're heading over to Ghana. This program is three credits and it's offered every winter break. It's a CSU faculty led program and has a theme of transnational solidarity through youth development. Students will engage in community building projects that includes working alongside Ghanaian youth and youth adults to learn about how Ghanaian understands, Ghanaians understand their society and culture. Students can expect to work within local communities meet traditional elders and queen mothers, listen to lectures about the transatlantic slave trade, visit museums, artist galleries, experience rural and urban life, learn about traditional storytelling, African drumming and dance, and visit open air markets. So Ghana is a small tropical English speaking West African country of about 25 million people. It has a rich cultural history and artisan tradition which has been felt throughout the world through items like drums, vibrant textiles, and handmade glass beads. Ghanaian people have unrivaled hospitality and a rich cultural history. So this course is called Study Abroad Ghana, Youth Development, Transnational Perspectives. The last program I wanna share with you all today is called Communications in Rome. This is offered every summer and is a three credit program. The communication department does offer three different staff and faculty led programs. So this is just one that I wanted to highlight today. 
This is also an honors program. So if you are an honors student, you can gain honors credit on this program. The course is called Bridging Cultures, Italian American Intercultural Communication. This course will familiarize you with theory, concepts, principles, research methods, and practical skills of intercultural and cross-cultural communication, construction and negotiation of Italian identity, and strategies of an effective dialogue with a global mindset. So one interesting fact, it, fact is Rome is the capital of Italy and one of the most populous and historic cities in the European Union. So during this program, students will be based at the American University of Rome, and visits include many import, important cultural sites, including the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, and the Vatican. All right, so one of the biggest questions we get from students are, how do credits work? The question depends on which type of program you are on. And we are here to help support you through that process. So the programs I shared with you today were all direct CSU credit. We actually offer over 100 programs that give students CSU direct credits. Other types of programs that you may have heard of, heard of in different presentations through the fair, such as affiliate programming, include transfer credits. And there are two steps to ensuring credits will work for your degree. First, well, you, you will have the coursework that you take on your education abroad program reviewed by the registrar's office. The registrar will determine how many credits each course, course is worth and how it will come back to CSU. Second, your academic department will determine how the coursework will fulfill your degree requirements. With both of these approvals, you can hop on the plane feeling confident that your credits will transfer back and help you keep you on track for graduation. So once you've decided on a program, Education Abroad is here to support you through those steps, including filling out the Education Abroad Transfer Credit Form. This is what a quick photo of what that form looks like, and we can help support you through this process. Um, but the first step will be completing by a student, yourself, then you'll send it to the registrar for review, and as well as your academic advisor for review, and finally sent to our office. There are several other professionals who will advise you as you prepare for your experience abroad here at CSU. We are all working together to make sure your questions and needs are addressed. So you can hear, see here in the picture, we have our CSU Education Abroad Coordinator, such as myself, we also have your CSU academic advisor or academic success coordinator, as well as a program advisor or a CSU faculty or staff group leader, depending on program type. So this is our education abroad coordinator team. And you can see that each of us specialize in different regions of the world. So depending on where you wanna go, you would schedule an appointment with that coordinator. However, maybe you're still, you're not exactly sure where you wanna go. We also support students in general advising. And these are three of our peer advisors that can help with general advising. They are fantastic. The first student is Brennan. He studied abroad in Wales and he's an engineering student. Claudia studied abroad in France and is a psychology stu student. And Tia studied abroad in Morocco and is apparel and production and design student. All three of these students are fantastic and can help you with general advising as well. So did you know that a majority of your scholarships, grants, loans, and financial aid can go abroad with you? To learn more, you can join us at one of our financial aid and scholarship sessions that are offered every day at 930. There you can meet Cindy and Evelyn, two fantastic human beings, and they can help answer a lot of your questions. They work in the Office of Financial Aid and work with students, students who go on education abroad programs. The presentation offered at 9.30 every day will be focusing on scholarships, financial aid, and the session is live, so you can bring your questions, and we're also recording all of the sessions. Scholarships will rarely fully fund the education abroad program. However, they can close the gaps between your current financial aid and what you need to bring abroad. We will also have scholarship and fundraising workshops throughout the year, so you can find and obtain more funds. You can make an appointment with the education, financial aid advisors for education abroad through our website on the contact us page. At an appointment, you can look at your current financial aid, grants, loans, and scholarships, and they can give you an idea of what money you're able to bring abroad. It's a good idea to talk to our financial aid coordinators as you're selecting a program or before you select a program, so because they can help determine if the budget is good for your, if the program is good for your budget or not.
In addition, I wanted to point out the scholarship deadlines in that right tab over there. You'll see that they're shifting a little bit um, in 2022. So you wanna keep a close eye on that. So that's the basics on getting started as a college or liberal arts students and, and wanting to go abroad. Here are some great next steps. If you are like, yes, now is the time I wanna start planning. Um, first, you wanna figure out what classes you need to graduate. That's the first thing to focus on. We also have a fantastic Start Here page on our website that gives you all the details about going abroad. This is really helpful if you like to kind of explore on your own and read through things before making an appointment. You can research programs online using that recommended programs list I talked about for your major. Then you can make an appointment with an education abroad coordinator here in our office. We are on Laurel Hall and we take in-person appointments every Wednesday and Thursday. And then you can also schedule virtual appointments throughout the week. We also want you to make an appointment with a financial aid counselor for education abroad, and then you can apply for the program and scholarships. And there's a link to our website at the bottom there. So in addition to this presentation, I want to encourage you to go to a few other sessions throughout the week. If you haven't yet, Education Abroad 101 every day, as well as financial aid and scholarships. On Friday at 11, there, the C, uh, an affiliate called CIEE is hosting a session called The World is Your Classroom, How to Choose the Right Seat. Um, on Friday at 11.30, there's a session called Social Dust Justice in a Global Context that's hosted by API. That also sounds like a really fascinating one you may wanna check out. And I just wanted to mention again that all of our sessions are being recorded and live streamed to YouTube. So you'll be able to find these afterwards. Um, and that's it for today. I am so grateful to spend time with you all here in this space. Feel free to pop any questions you have right now into the chat, into the Q&A, and I can help answer those. And if not, I hope to see you at some of our future sessions this week, hopefully in our office. That we, This is the start of your education abroad journey with us. Um, we can't wait to support you and see where you go. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We currently do not have any questions, Nicole. Thanks, Christopher. Then we can go ahead and wrap up. And I just want to say thanks for Christopher for being a great host. And we will see each other soon. Bye, everyone.